So we're here checking out the uh, boiler and the basement of 1022 Knox. As you can see, it's a hot water boiler and um, it has copper lines and they are adapted into the old steel lines, black pipe. As you follow it throughout the basement, you see that most of the pipe in the basement here is uh, a lot bigger and it's black iron. And they adapted the newer boiler with the copper fittings with the old ones. Uh, just the other day, we came to the uh, ins uh, inside of the boiler and we took all the burners out and cleaned them and made sure they're safe and they burn efficiently and the burners are working perfectly. What we're here to look at today is this Bell and Gossett motor and it's not pumping and we're gonna see why. We're here today to um, service the motor and the um, coupler and motor mount, coupler and motor mount, and that is, if you look down below here, it is this. It's what they call coupler and motor mount. Now it's interesting. There is a a cast iron piece, and it's there's sort of two cast iron pieces and they're sort of linked together by these four small springs if you notice now this coupler and motor mount here is inside this housing right here so what we're going to do is we're going to shut the power off to this boiler so that this motor stops turning and then once we do that you'll see what I believe is malfunctioning inside this pump. Um, I believe that the um, motor mount, the coupler and motor mount has gotten, is broken or, or rusted. It's no longer there, so it's no longer properly turning the impeller inside this housing here. And that is, that pump is that impeller is what circulates the water through the system. So without that impeller turning, the heat can't get through the whole system. Uh, the, 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 the pump is necessary to run the hot water through all throughout the entire system. All the radiators and baseboard heaters inside this house. Now right at this moment the radiators on the first floor are getting warm but they're getting warm just by gravity. In other words, the boiler is heating the water and the water is just hot enough that it's, it's um, the heat is being conducted through the pipes and so the radiators on the first floor are getting hot and the house can get up to about 60 degrees, but that's about it. We can't get any hot water up to the second floor and that's because there's no pump working. So I'm gonna take a minute and get this housing taken apart and show you how this comes apart. All right, as I said, first thing we're going to do here is turn the power off to the boiler. So if you just follow me up here, and you'll see we just go up into the rafters. There's something up here that is called a Fusetron. And this thing's usually up in the rafters. All furnaces and boilers have them. And it's just a little electrical connection. Now if you notice, there's a fuse inside here and oftentimes when the furnace or boiler stops working without notice that fuse could be blown and it's real simple to change that fuse I mean you just unscrew it or screw it back in it, it's just to change the fuse but there's also a switch here if you notice there's an on off switch so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this switch on off and you'll hear the motor stop Okay, let me switch it back on. Now let me come down to the boiler and get a look at the motor there. And I'm going to hit the switch now. Watch, the motor will stop. Now that the electricity is off to the motor,
Now I can I can service it, and so um, we're what we're going to do is we're going to take off the motor. We're just there. There's four bolts here, and um, we're going to take these four bolts off here. There's one here, one here, and two on the opposite side, which are going to be kind of tight to get at, but they are. And we're going to take these four bolts out of here. We're going to remove the motor which is going to expose the inside of this housing and you'll see that that's where th that houses the coupler and motor mount so you'll see okay so we're going to get a, a socket wrench here just put it on the bolt and we're going to take loosen up each one somewhat sort of like when you're taking off a tire almost the other side's going to be a little difficult, a little more difficult to get, so just I'll get it off without the camera in my hand. Hold on a minute. So I'm, I'm down underneath now. It's a little, it's a little tight under here, but it's okay. And um, so we'll get them both off. And they just seem to just kind of come out of there you see and um, the one on the other side I believe is loose as well so I got the bolt off and the motor came apart from the housing now it's pretty much what I suspected if you look inside this housing you can see that this old piece here is kind of rusted and there's dirt in there see and and here this looks like the old the old piece that turns its impeller so we're going to take it out of there and then we're going to replace it with this new piece so I removed this little gear sort of mechanism from here there's a little allen key wrench little allen key there and the same thing with the other side I just stuck the allen wrench in there loosen it up and then that piece just comes off and we're left with a stud that's meant to accept this so I um, cleaned this out this housing now what we're going to do is we're going to install this coupler and motor mount. Now, so we're just going to put this, you see this little hole there? Um, this little hole on the side of this. So if you notice on this little stud there's a hole there and that's where we're going to mount this and we're going to put the, make it, we're going to put it in so that the allen key that's in there is going to line up right at that hole. That's how we're going to set it up here. Okay, I got that coupler and motor mount in there. And, uh, God, it wasn't nearly as easy as it looks. But you see now it turns. See, it turns. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this side and take the other side and I'm going to put it on the stud on that motor and then tighten the allen wrench down on that and it'll be connected on both sides it'll be connected on the impeller side and it'll be connected on the motor side both on a stud connected by this okay I got the um, pieces on the interior there put together coupler motor uh, the coupler and motor mount and I'm just putting the nuts back now He's going to tighten this up, like I said, like you're sort of like doing like a, like you're putting a tire on. You just do a couple of them at a time. Got to get them tightened evenly. You don't have to get them real tight, because if you make it too tight, this part here is cast iron, and it just tends to crack. So if you crack it, that means you've got to buy a new housing, and you don't want to do that. So, uh, you know, we're tight, and we're making them snug, but not real tight. Okay. 
And if you notice there, we had to um, disconnect the electric here. And that was just because it was hard to hold the motor up while it was still connected to this piece of wire here. So we had to disconnect the electric and made it a little easier to handle the motor. So that's how we got it put back in. And so we're going to tighten up the rest of these bolts and come back and reconnect the electric. Now it's um, very easy to hook up the electric. We're just going to stick the, there's a black and white wire here. And we're going to stick it through this little connector and bring that piece of BX, this flexible conduit is what they call BX. And then we're going to take that and we're going to twist together the black ones with the black, the two blacks with the two blacks, and the two whites with the two whites. Okay, that's a black wire connected to the white wire. And then if you notice we just put we put wire nuts on the end so to hold the wire together and makes it so no wire touches any other metal. Alright, so then we're going to tuck these in here. And I like to do my work nice and neat. I'm going to tuck those in. And then we're going to get the cap. And the cap goes back on just like this. So we just uh, got the lid on, the cat, uh, cover, and um, just tighten up the screw. That seems to be it. Looks like we got the motor back on. Looks like we got everything here is supposed to, the way it's supposed to be. So let's go up top and see if we turn this on and see what happens. I'm going to know immediately if it works or not. So this is good. Ready? And it is working. That's beautiful. Guess I'm quite happy with this job. Seems like the motor's running fine. The house should be heating up real nice. Another boiler. Tackled. Defeated.